Why did a Cold War arms race develop? NATO had been set up and the USSR became more suspicious. The Cold War crises, Hiroshima, Berlin and Korea, had increased the tensions between East and, between East and West. The USA wanted to roll back communism. The USSR believed that the USA wanted to undermine the USSR in Europe. The USA increased its spending on their military arsenal up to 18% of the gross national product in the USA and up to 10% in Britain and France. The USSR had a much bigger conventional army, which governments in the West believed could overrun Western Europe, for example, France and West Germany. How did the arms race evolve? In the years immediately after the uh, Second World War, the United States had a monopoly of had a monopoly on specific knowledge of and raw materials for nuclear weaponry. While American experts had predicted that the Soviet Union would not have nu would not have nuclear weapons until the mid 1950s, the, Soviet, the first Soviet bomb was detonated on August 29, 1949, shocking the entire world. Both nations began the development of a hydrogen bomb, and the United States detonated the first hydrogen bomb on November 1st, 1952, codenamed Mike. Again, the Soviets surprised the world by exploding a deployable thermonuclear device in August 1953, although it was not a true multi-stage hydrogen bomb. The Soviet Union detonated its first true hydrogen bomb on November 22nd, on November 22nd 1955. The most important development in terms of delivery in the 1950s was the introduction of inter intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs. Missiles had long been regarded the ideal platform for nuclear weapons and were potentially a more effective delivery system than strategic bombers. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union showed, showed the world that they had missiles able to reach any part of the world when they launched the Sputnik satellite into Earth's, into Earth's orbit. The United States launched its own satellite on 31st of October 1959. The space race showcased technology critical to the, de to the delivery of nuclear weapons, the ICBM boosters, while maintaining the appearance of being for science and exploration. The USA invested in the development of aircraft, acted as bombers, and by 1955 the USA possessed the first bomber with intercontinental range, the B-55 Stratofortress. The problems with the use of conventional aircraft as bombers were that they were relatively slow and were vulnerable to being shot down by anti-aircraft systems. That's it. The Russians were first to start in the development of rocket science, and after the defeat of Nazi Germany in 1945, many of its scientists were captured and put to work on the Soviet rocket program. Nazis had attempted to use rockets as delivery systems for its bombs, developing the V-2 rocket. This expertise was vital to the Soviets, helping them to launch their first rocket in 19. 57 in Kazakhstan. It's nice. It was the first ICBM capable of carrying a thermonuclear bomb. Potemkinism is the process of building just enough capability to provide the illusion that more lies behind it. The Soviets' lead in ICBMs was less impressive than it seemed. The early missiles were unreliable and unsuitable for operational use. By 1960, the USSR only possessed four ICBMs that were fully functional. The USA, in response to a seeming missile gap between them and the USSR, developed the world's first submarine-launched ballistic missile, Polaris, in July 1960. JFK ordered the construction of 41 nuclear submarines, expanded the number of Minutemen ICBMs to 1,054, and committed America to landing a man on the moon within 10 years. By 1962, the USA had 4,000 missile warheads compared with the Soviet Union's 220. Any seeming missile gap was clearly bull. Firstly, it was important because it ended the nuclear monopoly that the USA had since they dropped the two atomic bombs on both Hiroshima and Nagasaki on the 6th and 9th of August 1945. After 1949, which is when the USSR dropped their first atomic weapon, a near enough copy of the America's Fat Man, the USA were no longer the only country to have atomic weapons. This caused issues. Secondly, it started the arms race. With the fact that the USSR had matched the USA came, came the fact that the US felt the necessity to exceed the USSR in technology as a form of deterrent. This, naturally, was a feeling met neutrally by the USSR and so the arms race began. Summarising the arms race can be done so, in essence, by saying, my dad's bigger than your dad. 
Furthermore, it started the root beginning for the concept of mutually assured destruction. This is the idea that if a superpower was to drop an atomic weapon on the other, they would retaliate in the same way. In 1952, America gained their first H-bomb, as did the Soviets in 1953. It's examples such as this in which both sides have equal technology that sustained mad between the two superpowers. This created such a climate of fear that the Cold War was kept cold. During the 1950s, the USA's main focus was the arms race. This meant that retention wasn't diverted to foreign affairs such as Poland and Hungary, as had happened in the 1940s with Germany and Greece. The lack of involvement in the 1950s lowered tensions, tensions between them and the Soviets. The arms race did lead to a significant amount of paranoia and distrust between the USA and Soviets. For instance, in 1960, the USA had a U-2 spy plane shot down in Soviet airspace. This was trying to survey Soviet nuclear weapon sites. Also, when Khrushchev made what appeared to be a relatively diplomatic and progressive trip to the USA in 1959, the true tensions with the arms race showed. This happened when Khrushchev was denied entry into Disneyland, and because of this, he declared that he thought the USA were hiding rocket launch pads there. In 1962, the Cold War nearly turned very hot indeed. The Cuban Missile Crisis was based on the Soviets attempting to store MRBMs in Cuba. The USA took a severe dislike to this, and chaos ensued with the future of the world being put into doubt.